G'day Rubius, this is Kane, CEO of Reinteractive. Uh, I'm currently working with a client on building a custom AI model and an open source one. And the reason we're doing that for this particular customer is they have very sensitive information and client information that we don't want to pass over to OpenAI or one of the other proprietary models. So I've been doing a little bit of work on this this week and I've got a model working. So I wanted to show you as Ruby developers, how you can download, set up your own custom AI models and open source ones, and how you can write Ruby code to interact with those models through your API. So it's fairly basic in terms of what this code will do, but I think the process of getting it set up, uh, take, it took me quite a while to get through some of the steps. It's pretty easy in the end. The documentation, of course, is not fantastic. So the first thing you'll need when creating your own local open source model is software such as this one, Alama. So Alama is software that'll run on your computer and it runs in the background and it actually uh, controls the model so that you can actually make API calls locally uh, to that particular model. Now, in terms of the different models, there's quite a few of them that you can access. And if you haven't sort of been keeping up with all the open source AI models that have been generated. I'll show you the one that's probably best uh, to start with. But Llama, you might be familiar with. That's Facebook's uh, open source model. Uh, but there's a few others here, such as Mistral, uh, Lava, Mextral, and oh, there's a whole bunch here. I mean, I don't even know what half of these are, and that's fine. All of these are open source, and you can just download them uh, and use them. Uh, Mixtral is probably the best open source one at the moment. However, uh, you'll see here that requires 48 gigs of RAM. And unfortunately, I'm still running on an Intel Mac uh, with not quite that much RAM. So I'll be upgrading soon. But Mixtral is fantastic because it combines uh, eight different models into one. Uh, and very powerful in that regard. But for our purposes, the one that we'll want to be using is Mistral. That's probably, for its size, I would say the best uh, open source AI uh, at the moment. Now, one of the things with Mistral is it's a 7 billion parameter AI model. And just to give some context on what that means, because you might hear that thrown around quite a lot, is all of these AI models, they're all neural networks. Now, they're very specific neural networks and they have very specific ways of being trained. But at a general level, uh, the, the neural networks are roughly the same. You've got your input neurons, all your hidden layers, which does a lot of processing in your output. And the whole idea of training these is that you're setting up these weights. And the whole idea, it creates basically like a super advanced algorithm or a pattern recognition system, which can be quite powerful in terms of a large language model in recognizing patterns. So that when you ask it a certain question, it knows the pattern in which way to answer it. But when we're talking about the parameters at a very high and not extremely technical level, between each of these neurons, a weight is given. It's a percentage, basically. And it's kind of like, how much of the data am I going to send on this path? Now, people who know their neural networks will cringe at what I'm saying, but I'm just giving the analogy at a high level. But a 7 billion parameter model with some other things, but effectively has... 7 billion of these different weights. So when you're talking about a 7 billion parameter model, you've got probably uh, 100, maybe 100 layers. And in terms of the neurons per layer, there's probably thousands. And when you sort of multiply all that together, uh, you get the, the 7 billion weights. Uh, and it just means that the more, generally speaking, the more weights there are, the better the algorithm is, is at predicting uh, patterns. What we want to do now is we want to download Alama so that we can start running our models locally. So right now it's available on Mac and Linux. Uh, it's not available directly on Windows, though I believe that's coming uh, relatively soon. So this part is straightforward. I'm running on a Mac, so I'm just going to download uh, the software. Now that's loaded, I can open the zip file and I'll be able to extract uh, the software. So alarm is now extracted and I'm going to run the program. 
So when a llama opens up, this is what you get. Uh, the software itself is pretty simple. Most of it is uh, operating via command line interface. Uh, so basically this will tell you what you need to do. So we're going to install the command line tool. Uh, that's finished installing and it's basically telling you how to run your first model. So when you run this in your command line tool, what run will do is if you don't have that model installed onto your computer, it'll extract the model down from the internet. Now this is if we were using uh, the Llama model, we want to use Mistral. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how we do that on our command line. Now I've already got a Llama running uh, locally. I've already installed it. So when I do a Llama run Mistral, it just loads up. And in a moment, I'll have access to the command prompt for the model. All right, so now I can just converse with it like I would chat GPT. So in this case, I'll just keep it simple and run hello. Now, for me locally, this doesn't run super fast. I'm on a 2019 Intel Mac. Once I upgrade to an M3 with a lot more RAM, GPUs, etc., uh, then I'll get a lot more speed uh, out of this. But from here, like I said, you can interact with it like any uh, ChatGPT or uh, model like that. All right, so while that's useful, and of course you can have a lot of fun uh, downloading and using uncensored uh, models, which I absolutely state to use with care because they will literally uh, provide data that can be quite dangerous. Uh, and just as an aside, I think there is a responsibility uh, that we definitely take care of those sorts of models. Now, what we can do is we can set up a file to customize the base model. Uh, it's a little bit like in ChatGPT, they've got their instructions where you can tell ChatGPT how you want it to respond. So going to the... Uh, Alarma GitHub page, uh, there's a model file markdown. So the model file is our way to create sort of a custom uh, version of the model. So I'm going to just go down to the basic structure here. And this is how you do it. You've, you set which model it is. You can set some parameters such as the temperature or uh, how quote unquote creative or more correctly how random the model will be. And then you can set a system prompt, which is how the model will tend to uh, act when you're communicating with it. So in my code editor here, I've created a model file and this is where I can set the parameters of that model. So in the from, my model is Mistral. Uh, I'm gonna set the temperature to zero. Uh, I want it to be extremely accurate and the system prompt might be you uh, a software assistant for Ruby developers you provide answers to questions about Ruby programming language all right let's save that so with that file in place I can use my terminal okay now in the terminal I can run in the command line alarma create give the model a name, I'm going to call it Ruby, the file flag, and then you set the relative path to the model file, and you'll see it goes ahead and creates the model. So if I go Alama list, uh, it'll list out the models that are created. In this case, there's my uh, Ruby version. So now I can do Alama run Ruby, and that model will start loading up. And now I can ask the question, how do I convert a PDF to text? Now I'm just gonna pause while it uh, runs out because again, my computer's not super fast at the moment. Okay, so that's finished uh, executing and you'll see here it's got the text uh, and it's giving me inline uh, code for how to execute and run in Ruby. Uh, and that looks pretty good. All right, so that probably took about one and a half minutes to fully uh, stream uh, if you're running this on uh, like an AWS 
uh, Linux virtual machine with enough RAM, it would be fast. Uh, and that's the use case of where you'd use it. Uh, unless you've got a high-powered M3 Mac or something to that effect, uh, running these things locally will tend to be a little slow. Uh, now, in terms of accessing the model from your Ruby code, you can see I've got the code uh, here. And right now there's no gems for working with Alama. Uh, if I have time, I might get around to doing that. Uh, but we can just use the basic HTTP uh, request methods to, to extract it. So for Alama, when it's running, and it's running in the background, I can't show you my uh, toolbar, but I've got the little Alama icon up in the top right, which shows me it's running uh, in the background. And what that does, it is opens up uh, the port 11434. So now I can make requests to API slash chat, uh, in order to uh, make requests to that AI model. Uh, so I basically set up my request with, so a post request to that URI uh, in format JSON. And now I set up the body. Uh, and in the body, you want to set the name of the model. So in this case, I should change this to uh, Ruby. Uh, this follows the basic messages uh, AI format where you set the role which can either be system, user, or assistant. System, uh, you tend to use to tell the system how to behave. The user is where you ask the question, and the assistant will be the one that provides back the response. Uh, I've turned off streaming, because otherwise it'll literally send back an object with each uh, word. Uh, I make the request, and then I'm just putting it to the uh, console. So, exiting the model, and I can run this script. And the question I'm asking is the same, how can I convert a PDF uh, into text? All right, so that's now executing. Uh, so uh, the AI model's now returned its response. Now one thing during that, I had to set the read timeout to 120 seconds because it kept timing out, uh, again, given the speed running locally. Uh, there's a lot of data in here. The main thing you're interested in this section, you've got the role as the assistant and you've got the content. And then this is the actual content generated uh, by the model. There's other information at the bottom, uh, such as total duration, uh, how many um, tokens were used and so on. So if you were to run that on an AWS virtual machine or something similar uh, with plenty of power, you could start running your own AI models. I think it's really good for companies where they've got quite sensitive proprietary data. Uh, you can easily train the AI model on your data and then query that data. Uh, these models are very, very good at taking unstructured data and converting it into a structured form. Uh, so I've got a lot of clients doing that at the moment where they get, say, uh, emails with a lot of unstructured data in it and they need exact specific information extracted uh, from that or there's files that need to be parsed to see if certain actions have occurred uh, and so on. So have fun with that. Uh, someone should go and build that Ruby wrapper uh, if it's not me, <laughs> someone else. Uh, so we can work a little bit better with Alama uh, in our Ruby industry. All right. Thanks team.